Sea to Folks, read aloud by Mrs. Carter. Today we're going to be listening to Chapter 5, Leonia. Let's answer some of the following questions about this chapter. What does Leona contribute to the garden? Why does Leona tell the story about her grandmother at the beginning of the chapter? How do Leona's actions provide a clue about her personality? Think about her traits. How did the city officials react to Leona's phone telephone calls? What did Leona mean when she observed, you can't measure the distance between my block and City Hall in miles? These are all questions that we are going to be thinking about as we are listening. Chapter 5, Leona. Mama believed in doctors, but not Granny. Not even if they were black. No, ma'am. I grew up in her house, back in Atlanta. She drank down a big cup of goldenrod tea every morning, with a nutmeg floating in it, and declared she didn't need no other medicine. Dr. Bates tried to sell her his iron pills and told her straight out that the tea of hers would raise her blood pressure and burst her heart. He passed away that very same summer. Next doctor said it would give her brain fever. He died on his 50th birthday, I believe, right during the party. Had him a real nice funeral later. Granny lived to 99 by her count. She kept a scrapbook with the obituaries of all the doctors she outlived and could recite the list of names by heart like a chapter out of Genesis. We took to going to their funerals right regular over the years. She always laid some golden rod on their graves. I was thinking about her one day walking home from the grocery store on Gibbs Street. Then I came to the vacant lot and saw three people in different parts of it. I thought maybe they were looking for money. Turned out they had shovels, not metal detectors. When I saw they had little gardens going, I said to myself, I believe I'll plant me a patch of golden rod right here. There was a man standing and watching from the sidewalk and a girl looking down a window. There were probably lots of folks who'd want to grow something just like me. Then I studied all the trash on the ground. Don't want to know why anyone called that lot vacant. The garbage was piled high as your waist, some of it from the neighborhood and some just dropped off by outside people. The ones who don't want to pay at the dump or got dangerous chemicals or Think we're such slobs down here we won't mind another load of junk. We can't get City Hall to pick up our trash, but we get, got it delivered just fine. The smell's enough to curl up a crocodile's nose, especially in the summer. The gardeners had made some trails through it, but I knew precious few wouldn't join them until that mess was hauled away. Looking at it, I knew this wasn't a job for no wheelbarrow. This was a job for the telephone. I marched on home. I've got two kids in high school. That has more guns than books, so I know all about complaining to officials and such about things that need changing. Next morning was Monday. At 9 o'clock, I drank a tall glass of water. I knew I'd be having to say the same thing to 15 or 20 government folks. I put Miles on the CD player and stretched out on the bed. Might as well be comfortable when you're on hold. Then I opened the phone book and started dialing. Did you ever watch a sax player close up? They pushed down a key in the way... And way at the other end of the instrument, something moves. That's what I was looking for, the key that would make that trash disappear. I tried the city of Cleveland, then the Cayuga County, then the state of Ohio, and finally the U.S. government. Six and a half hours later, I found out the lot was owned by the city. But the people running Cleveland don't usually come down here unless they take a wrong turn on the freeway. You can't measure the distance between my block and City Hall in miles. Just the same, I kept working on it the next day. That Citizens Information Center told me to call the Public Health Department. They sent me to someone else. They're all trained to be as slippery as snakes. And to be out to lunch, to not return messages, and to keep folks on hold until they get gray and die. I had the feeling I was getting farther from the key I needed instead of closer. Then, on the third day, I thought on it. When people talk to you on the phone, you're nothing but a voice. And when you're on hold, you're not even that. I had to make myself real to him. That morning, I took a bus downtown and walked into the public health department. Told all, told about the trash all over again to this dolled up receptionist. Let her see me up close and personal and hear me loud and clear. She told me to sit down with a few others waiting. I did. Then I opened the garbage bag I'd picked up in the lot on my way. The smell that came out of it made you think of hog pens and maggots and kitchen scraps from back when Nixon was president. It was amazing how quick people noticed it, including that receptionist. And even more amazing how quick I was called in to have a meeting with someone. I was definitely real to them now. 
I brought that bag along with me to the meeting to keep it that way.